Thank you so much for being here again. Welcome back to Hannah Worldwide and Friends, the podcast where traveler, experts and adventurer share their stories. If you want to learn about what it's like living in another country, you want to experience a new culture, or you just love to travel, this podcast is for you. Or maybe you need to get out of your comfort zone and this podcast might be the inspiration you need. You can find me on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi everyone, please welcome with me Doreen Ignacio Abrigo from the Philippines. Doreen moved to New Zealand as a teenager after her dad spent three years in this country for work. The whole family moved over and joined him in 2009. Now Doreen has settled down and has started her own little family with having her little boy Joseph. She also started a little business for baking and has her own photography page. I will link that all down in the page below so that you can check out her baking if you're in New Zealand ready to order. And also, if you need a good photographer, you can just hit her up. Hi, Doreen. Hi. Thank you so much for having time to chat with me today. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Of course. I was waiting for that moment for a long time now. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's so good. I know it's hard, especially, you know, with a young child. It's mm -hmm. not that easy to come together yeah. and to make like a decent amount of time. time. But I'm glad we finally managed. <laughs> yes, I'm happy to. Happy to be here. Yay. <laughs> finally, someone from the Philippines. I know so many and now I finally managed to interview you. Mm -hmm. So do you know why your dad was looking for a job outside of the Philippines in the first place? And then why he made the decision to come to New Zealand? What the factors were? It's actually really hard in the Philippines. I mean, growing up, it's it's not that we're rich. It's not that, like, you know, we have a lot of money. Yeah. Um, my dad worked in an elec electricity company. Yeah. Yeah. And that one is a really big one. Yeah. Like, the company that he's worked with, it's a really good company. He worked there for 19 years. Wow. And he decided to leave because... He thought there's not gonna be a future for us, yeah. like for for my siblings and I. So he actually applied for three different countries: right. New Zealand, Australia, and the USA. Yeah. And well, I don't know what the <laughs> process were, but he managed to get an offer from New Zealand. Yeah. So, and that was pretty. Yeah, much. that was pretty much it. Yeah. Sometimes it's that easy, right? You yeah. send it out and then the person who wants you, you will move with that. Yeah. And so he has been three years by himself here mm -hmm. before you guys moved over as a whole family. Yeah. How was that for you to be still back knowing your dad went out to it was, kind of provide for you guys? Mm. It was hard. Like, it was hard because we're really close like our family is really close yeah and it's hard it was it was really hard i was crying at the airport you know yeah because like the thought of him not being with us yeah it's it's a bit scary because yeah we've been together for like how many years and it's it's a different it's gonna be a different life without him even though we yeah. we, we knew that he's just gonna work yeah so was, yeah, it was it was really hard. Yeah, was he able to come home during the three years or? Yeah, okay. like every year during Christmas, oh, nice. he would he would go back to the Philippines so we can spend it together. Yeah, like he would go for a month. Ah, but I can only imagine. I mean, not spending the time with your family in full for such a long time. One month a year is just not enough. <laughs> That's very true, and also during that time. Like, we didn't have, you know, like, FaceTime, or maybe we had, but we didn't have that kind of phone before. Yeah. We only, like, he only calls us using a telephone. Right, like so the, the old ones. The old ones. And yeah. then he would get 
uh, I think maybe like an hour or two hours of credit. Yeah. So because it was really expensive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it it was really hard. Like sometimes he didn't even get to say goodbye because oh. it would just cut off oh, because God. the time is 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 done. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was pretty hard back then. It was just like two two thousand and six, and you know. Yeah. Oh God. I. I can't really feel the same way because obviously I haven't gone through the same. But I remember when my dad just went to Canada for five months, which was like nothing in comparison. I was so sad as a child. I was just crying and I yeah. felt like he left us. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. It's just always hard to say goodbye. And even if it's for a weekend, right? Mm -hmm. It's just constantly saying goodbye. is just really, really tough on everyone. Yeah. So then you finally made the decision. Do you know why it was possible for all of you to then come over all together? Yeah, it was like when my dad first came here, he didn't even think about us moving. Yeah. Like he didn't like it here before <laughs> because it was too quiet. Yeah. There was not much people. It was so different from the life we have in the Philippines. Like, yeah, it's... Like, the people are everywhere. Yeah. The malls closes at, like, 11 p.m. Yeah. You know, it's it's very different. But then when he when he was telling us about what our life will, will be in the Philippines, like, after studying, yeah. he didn't even think we'll get a good job. So that's when he decided for us to come yeah. here. And back then, it was very easy. Like, he... Applied for our residency. Yeah. He didn't apply for just himself. He applied for all of us. Yeah. So that when we get approved, we can just go easily on. go. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I mean, I feel like more people say that too, that when it's just themselves, they usually can deal with it. But when there is a family and you have children, you kind of think so much more ahead mm -hmm. and you want the best for your children. And if he can't see a future there, which, you know, you can live happily and, you know, successfully in not necessarily money-wise, but in general, just feeling fulfilled, mm. um, that's a really good decision, I guess. Yeah, a lot of people would consider that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How was that for you? Do you remember how you felt and how you perceived it to move when you were a teenager because you know you are in the middle of puberty you have your friends there you have your other family members and luckily you have siblings so you didn't just go by yourself but how did that feel as a teenager to leave everything behind and then come to a completely new country new language I think for me it was more I was more excited oh, right. just because I'm going to be with my dad. Yeah. We're that close, you know, like I didn't even think about I'm going to leave my friends <laughs> behind. <laughs> I'm not going to see them for a while. Yeah. You know, what's more important to me that time was being together. Yeah. Like not separated anymore. Yeah. And I think yeah, I think that's that's what I felt. Like I didn't even feel so sad. Yeah. That I'm going to leave my friends or some of their relatives, I was happy. Yeah. Yeah, I was more happy than <laughs> I was sad. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, most people probably picture this really heavy farewell and, you know, being like, oh, no, I need to say goodbye. But actually be just so excited. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's a good start. How was it for you to then be here and arrive in the country and... Do you remember if you thought of everything will be better now since we are all together? And was it actually better? Did it feel better? Or was it then harder for you to be here? Mm. I think when we first arrived, it was it was completely like a different world. Yeah. <laughs> it was, we arrived in August 2009. Yeah. It was still a bit chilly a bit cold yeah it was nice like the feeling was so nice <laughs> like driving from Auckland to Hamilton it was it was really nice like all oh, the greenery yeah. we we don't have 
that much in the Philippines because they're all you know buildings and houses. Yeah. But it was it was completely different. It was good. It was nice. We stopped over at KFC to <laughs> grab some dinner. Yeah. Yeah. It was. I think it was a stopover at Huntley. Yeah. And it was. It was really nice. Like first. Uh, meal together again as a family. Yeah. So it was really nice and really, uh, how do you say that? It was really memorable for me. Yeah. Because Clearly. that was yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, and yeah. But then when I started studying, that was yeah. when I felt really sad. Yeah, because it was so different from the schools and the people. So I didn't have friends. Yeah. And I think I started quite late as well. So most of the people have their friends already like yeah. in school, they have their groups already and I was like the new yeah. You know, you know the the new girl and yeah. no one talked to me. Right. So it was it was pretty hard and studying as well like in the Philippines it was so different yeah. than here. So I found myself really struggling. Yeah. Like here I was able to choose like my subjects but in the philippines right. they're all laid out for you oh right yeah so it was completely different and then i think i remember one of the subjects i chose was pe yeah. and then the pe that time was tennis and oh, i was like right. oh i don't even know how to play tennis you know yeah. and like my classmates knew everything everything and then you like each other yeah. i was the new girl and i was like yeah oh this is so hard yeah. so i dropped i actually dropped that subject yeah. just because i didn't want to you know want to stress myself or be, or be sad about it yeah so yeah it was it was really hard for me like yeah i, I was really yeah i was really struggling i i remember i had a diary that time when i was Why? writing i was so sad i don't have any friends and stuff like that so it was it was really hard yeah yeah and i mean knowing you now for five years as well you are more of an introvert in most ways especially with people you don't know mm -hmm. And I think it's not that easy for you to open up as well. So then also being the new girl, being different. And yeah, I and I know teenager can be really rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, I think that really built your personality as well to still be that person who prefers to, you know, sit for yourself and mm -hmm. wait and observe the people first before you decide if you want to let them into your life <laughs> that's very true <laughs> since you know we always talk about how we met yeah we, we started working together and you always wanted to sit and just check your phone so that no one talks to you and i remember you telling me that i kind of you know, ask you questions and stuff and kind of forced you to talk to me. <laughs> so I'm feeling really honored that you decided after observing me that I'm worth staying in your life. <laughs> no, I'm glad. I'm actually glad that I talked to you, you know. <laughs> But I mean, it really is leaving a print on you when you first come and you have no friends and people don't really welcome you or, you know, teenager don't understand that it's important to include you in things and to make you feel welcome because mm. it's hard. Teenagers just mind their own business and care about their own life. Were you able to speak English already? Is that something you came over with? Yeah, yeah. In the Philippines, like the, the, the moment you start studying, they yeah. teach you English. So for me, it was, it was not that hard to speak in English. Yeah. I think what was hard was the way their accent yeah yeah like trying to understand them because yeah. it was completely i mean for yeah. me it was different i haven't heard that accent before yeah, so yeah. and they can speak quite fast yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so did you ever feel like excluded because you were different or did you feel like they made some comments because you look different or you maybe even had different types of food or was there any moment where you recall that, you know, you felt really excluded because of where you come from? Not really. That's yeah, nice. I think I think they were kind enough. <laughs> 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 Not to say something bad to me. Yeah. I mean, I haven't heard anything 
Yeah. Like, why is she eating, you know, rice and something else? <laughs> Now, I haven't heard any any bad thing when I was studying in yeah. high school, which was really good. Yeah. No, I think it's mainly because they already have friends. Yeah. And it's hard. And they didn't necessarily need to let someone new in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they don't even know me. So yeah. I think it's hard on them as well as much as it was hard for me. Yeah. Was there a moment when you actually had your first friend? Or did you just decide, you know what, I don't need anyone. I will be the loner now. I can do it on my own. And you just went with it or was there a moment when you actually felt like okay someone is opening up and I actually want to you know find someone as well did you have like your high school friend at one point or did you just go through it like that no not really not not a high school friend because I was I only studied for a year right yeah before before starting university yeah so for me I was like okay if I don't get a friend then that's it. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm fine with it. <laughs> yeah. But when I started studying um, at Wintech, yeah. uh, there was this one girl. Yeah. She talked to me first. <laughs> yeah. She was my friend during that time yeah. when I was studying uh, business administration. Yeah. Yeah. She was my friend. Like we go to lunch together. We go to classes together. Yeah. Yeah. She was my friend back then. And then when... I studied a different course. Yeah. I had another friend. She was she was my friend during those years of the science yeah. course. So yeah, we go to lunch together. Sometimes we drive together because apparently we were neighbors and we didn't even know before. <laughs> oh, funny. But yeah, that was fun. That was like my college year, my university yeah. year was fun because I had people yeah. to talk to and nice yeah i was a bit more relaxed yeah i guess yeah and do you know because you have a sister and a brother do you know if they had the same struggles or was it easier or harder for them no i don't think so because my sister when she studied in high school yeah she had filipino friends right which was very convenient like yeah. she had a lot she had a lot so that was easy for her but With my brother, I think I think he had a hard time too because he changed to a different course. Like in yeah. the Philippines, he was studying nursing. Yeah. But then when he when we came here, he studied information technology like IT. Yeah. I think he had friends. Like I, I saw him. I saw him with friends. So I think yeah. he, he was okay. But knowing my brother, he's also a bit introvert. Yeah. Like he's more introvert than me. So, oh. so yeah, I, th I think he was okay. Yeah. But did you feel like because you guys have each other, it helped a lot? So at least after, you know, school, coming home, you kind of didn't necessarily need many more people as long as you had your family. Each other, yeah. Actually, yeah. Because yeah. I feel like I can see that. Like you're such a close family and it's so nice to see how you always are there for each other. And mm. yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. For us, it it didn't bother us that much. Yeah, because we know when we come home, we have we know we have, we have people yeah who trust us and love us. So yeah, I guess it didn't really get into me that much. Yeah, yeah. But after the first kind of excitement of being back together with the whole family, did it come later on that you were missing your friends from the Philippines and that you were actually? Like, how did you deal with having still family over in the Philippines and not seeing them all the time? I think we missed our relatives more than we missed our friends. I mean, no offense to my friends in the <laughs> Philippines. I mean, <laughs> it's just that it's different. Some some of my friends in the Philippines were not friends anymore. Yeah. Because, you know, you just drift apart. And yeah. if no one's making an effort, then it's just gonna go away you know yeah exactly but i think we miss the relatives more and the food yeah yeah because in the philippines we when you go to a mall you get a lot of different options yeah compared here here you don't get much so yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean being in an asian country yeah, yeah food is like such a big part. yeah food is such a big part shopping is such a big part yeah so it was different but The relatives, like, we 
we go every Sunday to our grandparents' house. Yeah. So that one we missed really much. Yeah. Because every Sunday we go to Mass and then after that we go to my grand grandparents house and yeah, all yeah. my cousins are there yeah. like my mom's side of the family we're yeah. very close so we always video call yeah just so we can make up for you know the time we don't get to spend together yeah yeah that's nice yeah. i guess that's the only thing you can do if you can't go over frequently right mm. i i would be so lost without video call <laughs> yeah that's so true <laughs> yeah oh god I'm glad that you're here, but of course I know there's a lot of hardship with it as well. Mm. And um, I mean, now I know you for so long. I also know you have now a big community mm. and um, it's mainly from your faith and from church. And did that help you find kind of, or to make this place your new home? Or did the community come later? Like now I know it's a big community, but of course you had to get into first you had to meet the people um was that one of the reasons why you slowly felt like this is your country this is home now yeah i think so i think the community played a big part yeah. of being comfortable being at peace in this country yeah but the community didn't start early yeah like we were here We arrived 2009 and I think because of my sister, like her friends in high school, they were part of the community Yeah. and then they were inviting us and then we were like, <laughs> us introverts were like, ah, uh, no, I think we're good. I think we don't need, I don't think we don't need that. <laughs> we're, we're okay. I think they invited us like every year. Yeah. Like, nice. but we didn't say yes. We didn't go to the camp. Yeah. So... I think it was 2015 when we actually said yes. <laughs> and it wasn't wow. me, actually. It was my sister. Like, yeah. she told me, oh, there's going to be a camp entry for the community. And yeah. I was like, oh, do we really need to go? <laughs> and she was like, oh, why not give it a try? Yeah, so yeah. I said yes because of my sister. Yeah. Just because I want to be with her. Yeah. And just to see, like, for curiosity purposes, yeah, what's it about and stuff yeah. like that. Which turned out really good, Definitely. judging by how many friends you made through the community as well and, mm. you know, how close you all are now. Yeah, and I actually met my husband there, like, in the community. So Exactly. <laughs> like, where would you be without that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who would have thought? <laughs> so it, it actually played a big part. The community is... So life-giving. Yeah. And I mean, I know that the faith for you is also really important. Mm. So did you just go to a different church before? Or did you go to the same church, but you just decided not to hang out with the community as much? Mm. Or how was that? Uh, we went to the same church. Yeah, actually. You just stayed away from the people. <laughs> no, we didn't even know there was a community. Right. Yeah. Like, even in the Philippines, it, it was a big thing, but we didn't know, know about it. Right. And okay. then when they were saying it was this thing, we're like, really? We, <laughs> we haven't heard anything about it. Yeah. So we were like, it's a new thing for us. Yeah. So when they asked about, like... After the mass, they asked if, you know, teenagers this age and this age are interested. We're like, mm, maybe not. <laughs> Then someone else invited us, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, it started from there. Yeah, sometimes it's good if someone is forcing you to do something, get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Because now I can see, you know, even if you're still the introvert when you meet new people, with them... You're so open and, you know, confident and sharing and all of that. Mm. It's nice to see both sides. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I actually, I know no one believes it, but I'm deep down also an introvert. And I, I know how it feels to be actually more scared to meet new people than anything. Mm. And then always, you know, we say in German, jump over your own shadow. <laughs> oh, that's really <laughs> As good. like challenge yourself and get over it and mm. just do it. Um, and get out of your comfort zone. Um, 
I know how that feels as well. So I'm really happy for you to find that happy place where you can fully be yourself and you can be open mm -hmm. and you just feel like accepted as yeah. well. Thank you. It's it's a really good community. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to see. I think sometimes, I mean, I see the community for you. I see the community from Nikki um, with her Iranian community. Mm. I see my friends with their Indian community. I never looked for that because I never wanted to only be with Germans. But sometimes, you know, when you are feeling really homesick, I think having a community of people from your own country can help so much. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, I'm also like, oh, maybe I should, you know, find, find. some people. But then I try to still have that natural thing happen where you meet people and you just let let that flow and not, you know, force yourself to be with people just because they are from the same country. But I get it. Like you have things in common. You might have grown up the same way and it's just mm. such a different thing. So definitely mm. big comfort in a new country. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And now, since you <laughs> mentioned your husband, <laughs> you met him in the community mm -hmm. and you have been dating for a long time and now you're finally married and it was an amazing ceremony i remember that <laughs> thank you <laughs> um and now you also have your really sweet boy joseph oh mm -hmm. my god he is so cute <laughs> how did the whole perception of things change for you with motherhood and your priorities have you felt like a completely change of life? I mean, clearly you you have a massive change of lifestyle, mm -hmm. but do you have new priorities, new things where you say like, okay, this has drastically changed since I'm a mom? Mm -hmm. I think so. I think I think my whole life actually changed. Yeah. To be honest, it's it's not something so easy. Yeah. It's 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 a difficult thing to do. It's a difficult uh, role. Yeah. Uh, I think my priorities, I think it changed a lot. Like when it was just Andrew and I, it was, you know, just being a wife and being a good wife. <laughs> But now that we have our son, it's so much different. It's him before us. Yeah. Or him before me. Yeah. Because I'm a stay at home mom. I'm a full time mom. Yeah. So meeting his needs before my needs yeah that's something that has changed because before you know whenever i want to buy something yeah. i'll just buy it you know i'm i'm not gonna think about it yeah but now that i have my son it's do i really need to buy this for myself yeah or do i need something else more important than this yeah you know it's not it's not that i don't love myself anymore yeah. it's just that balancing of what actually yeah. my needs are or is that actually just my want yeah, yeah you know yeah so i think the priority now is being a good mother and a good wife or of course mm -hmm. and putting not just my son before me but also my family yeah because it's they're important to me and yeah. I'll do whatever for them, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I think it changed so much in me. But also, I feel like this is my calling. Like, yeah, I actually found that your purpose, purpose in, life. in yeah. life to become a wife, to become a mother. Yeah. So it, for me, it's very rewarding, very fulfilling. It's hard, yes. But also, I wouldn't change a thing. I would yeah. do it all over again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can totally, you know, <laughs> see all of that, mm. especially us working together and always knowing you want to be 100% a mother and want to give all your love and attention to your child. And mm. I'm so happy that it was possible to do that. And, you know, it it is hard because in New Zealand, we all know it's not always easy to make money and it's not always easy to have you know, the income to get through as a family when only one person is working. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's really good that that's possible for you guys. 
But also, I know that you always look for something to, you know, make something on the side. Mm -hmm. And I have mentioned in the introduction that you have your little business now as well, where you started baking and um, cooking in a way as well, because mm -hmm. you also not just have um, cookies and stuff, you also have proper meals. Yeah. Which is also, and please correct me if I'm wrong, it is... Um, a specific Filipino dish, right? Is that yeah. what it is? Not really. Not really. Yeah, okay. not really. Yeah. Good. I wasn't too sure. <laughs> but yeah, so you offer food mm -hmm. as well to deliver. Mm -hmm. And um, you also do the photography on the side. Since Andrew, your husband, is also a photographer, which is helpful as well. You have kind of the equipment and the know-how and you can help each other. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about how that's going, especially how you experience that on the side of being a mom and if it actually, you know, helps you stay sane or, yeah, just a little bit introduce your business yeah. so that people who are interested can also go ahead and just look it up, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, Magic Shop started before, actually, before our wedding. Right. Yeah. I don't actually, like, from the start, I didn't want to sell stuff. Yeah. It was Andrew who pushed me to <laughs> sell stuff. <laughs> you would have just <gasps> given it away. Yeah, or, like, just for us, for family, for friends, yeah. but not to sell it to people. Yeah. But then he was like, you're, so, you're, you're good at it. Yeah. Why not share it to other people? They might like it, they might not. But, yeah. you know, at least you tried. Yeah. And so I was like, Okay, well, then let's give it a try. Yeah. So it started actually in 2020. Yeah, 2020 before our wedding. Yeah. And then one of our workmates, Christine. Yeah. She was going around and she was like, oh, you should buy from Magic Shop. It's, <laughs> it's going to help them for their wedding <laughs> and stuff like that. But yeah, I didn't even think that it's going to be like, it's not it's not huge. Yeah, yeah. As to say... But it's nice that the money I get from selling yeah. from the magic shop, from baking, can help in our daily life, like from yeah. buying nappies and stuff, you know? Yeah, of course. I actually stopped when I got pregnant. After I gave birth, yeah. Yeah, I stopped, stopped for a while. For yeah. a while, maybe for a year. Yeah. And then came back when my son is more than one year old yeah yeah it was it was hard yeah because most of the time he needs me yeah so for example i get orders so i'll start baking yeah. and then he wants to play with me so i'll stop <laughs> and then yeah. we'll play and then he, if he's if i see he's okay then i'll go back to baking it's it's just juggling my time to be yeah. honest <laughs> but it's actually nice because It's not just for my sanity. It's just that I like doing baking. Yeah. I, I like doing it. And I love when people enjoy it. Yeah. And it's actually really nice. I get really good comments and feedbacks from people. Yeah. I always love to see that. And I mean, for me, it's so hard because I see the photos and I think, oh my God, it looks delicious. But then I'm always struggling because I'm always trying to not have sweets. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, the angel and the devil on the shoulder arguing yeah. and I'm like oh you should just you know a little bit and then it's like no don't eat sweets once you start you can't stop it's really bad but yeah I always you know especially the mini cheesecakes with mm -hmm. like strawberry and mango look so yummy <laughs> and even your ube is it ube uh, ube yeah cookies yeah. like I love the creativity behind it that you think of new things new creations mm -hmm. and just you know try a little new mm -hmm. that's really cool so yeah that's one of our best sellers which i didn't think would be a hit yeah because i think ube is just an asian thing yeah maybe a philippine more than anything i think it's a filipino thing yeah in the philippines like everything ube is so good like <laughs> ube cake ube ice cream yeah like you can name it all ube yeah But then, yeah, I was like, ube, and then cream cheese inside. Yeah. I love cream cheese. I love <laughs> ube, so why not? <laughs> but yeah, I didn't even think it would be a hit, but 
yeah, people just love it. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for it. Because and are you having people, because I know your community is really supportive as well, but do you have like actual New Zealander who usually don't, are not always familiar with, you know, Asian food and stuff. Do you have them ordering as well and like enjoying the things you felt like is more for Asia? Asian, from, yeah. yeah. Let me think about it. Wait. <laughs> I don't think so. I think they're all Filipinos. <laughs> yeah, but then the crazy thing sometimes is some people I don't even know. Yeah. Like they just follow our Instagram page mm. and then they ordered like one there's this one girl during Christmas time yeah. she ordered like 24 ube cookies during wow. Christmas and I didn't even know her like That's we don't so have nice. we don't have mutual friends yeah. and I was like where did she f try our um, cookies how did yeah. she even find us yeah I, I didn't see, even ask see that's really nice like mm -hmm. it's probably either someone really missed some ube <laughs> and found it and thought like oh my god i need to try that and i need to get back into that flavor or you know someone might have recommended and then someone recommended yeah how, how oh, no. things happen which is nice i mean it's great that's how it works right mm -hmm. so if someone would be interested who is not from hamilton are there any options as well or is it mainly for people in hamilton for now it's mainly for people from Hamilton like I have messages from Christchurch in Auckland and Tauranga <laughs> they were asking if there are some ways that they can get like cookies from the yeah. magic shop and then I was like we're not there yet yeah but hopefully hopefully when we get bigger and more stable yeah we hopefully we we can you know yeah sell those cookies yeah nationwide <laughs> hopefully that would be really yeah cool. that would be really nice i mean i think having magic shop my dreams of having like my own in a way bakery yeah it's just up there now yeah thinking not, about it yeah yeah when it was before maybe like a dream now it's like becoming more and more reality mm, yeah and i mean I, I would always love to see because I don't think most people know Uber cookies mm -hmm. or Uber as a flavor as well. So I'm pretty sure that usually New Zealanders are quite open to try something, something. new as well. Mm -hmm. So if more people are aware, so that's for everyone now here, for my Hamilton friends and also for everyone who's listening, who wants to follow just in case it becomes bigger and is actually shipping <laughs> <laughs> yeah so for everyone who wants to try some uber flavored cookies with cream cheese or even like cheesecakes or other nice cookies because you do more mm -hmm. go to magic shop on instagram and just check it out and how is it going with your photography it's going well it's it's not that huge it's not that crazy you know i don't get a lot of bookings yeah but I think it's a nice space for me yeah. to just, I don't know, take photos and put it out there. Yeah. Yeah. Mainly for now, mainly my clients are my siblings. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not even mad about it. I mean, it starts with the family. Exactly. And as you know, I'm also starting with interviewing most of my friends from all over the world. So that's how it starts. And that's how we get the experience and mm. that's how we learn as we go and it's more comfortable with our family and friends first so once you know you master that you're ready for more and for new people and you know to put yourself out there with new people so it's always good to start yeah actually yeah last year i had i think f three new clients yeah which is really nice like yeah what was the name again just so that people fiat. Fiat, fiat fiat grace, grace photography yeah. yeah Fiat grace photography yeah so also if you need someone please check her out um i know my friend nikki has done her baby shower photos with you mm -hmm. and so our friend nikki <laughs> And so that was really beautiful. It looked amazing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and 
when you were still in the Philippines? Of course, you were really young, but have you had any future inspiration where you thought like, this is where I want to have my life going to, or that's where I see my life. And now looking back, what actually happened? Do you have any kind of memory of that? Not really, to be honest. Like when I was in the Philippines, I was just like, you know, loving my life. I'm not <laughs> studying. Yeah. I'm not even thinking about, you know, future, future, like yeah. being a wife and, and a mother. Yeah. You know, I, I wasn't at that point in my life when I was in the Philippines. I was just studying and trying to choose for what course I'm getting for college. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I didn't even think that my life would be like this now. Yeah. But I'm so glad it's like this. Yeah. Looking back, I know I do a lot of looking back, <laughs> but we can't see into the future. Mm -hmm. So um, looking back, what would you say was the hardest experience or the hardest thing for you to move countries and to start a new life with your family in a new country? And then what was the best experience of all of this? And where do you think you have grown the most? Hmm. Uh, I think the hardest would be not knowing what's going to happen. Yeah. Because we moved here. I'm not going to say I'm pretty young when we moved here. It's just that I think I already have, you know, understanding of life when we moved here. So I, yeah. I, I didn't know what to expect Yeah. I didn't know how our life will be. Yeah. Here and how how hard it's going to be. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think the hardest part is not knowing. Yeah, the uncertainty. Yeah, of the uncertainty of of life. Yeah. But as the time unfolds everything, yeah. I think I think it's it's a, it was a good it is a good life. Yeah. Like coming here and being with the family again and building my own family. Yeah. I think I wouldn't trade it for anything. And what's the other question? Your best experience. But I have the feeling that the second part might have been your best experience. <laughs> but the best experience. <laughs> hmm. I think the best experience was was having my family, like my, my I'm going to say original family, <laughs> you know, the, the family I came from. Yeah. Being with them and spending time together. Yeah. And having my own family now because most of the things that I do now is because I was born in that family. Yeah. What I am now is because of them. Yeah. And who, who I am now is because of them. Yeah. My values, yeah, because of them. So I think that's that's the beautiful part of my life now is looking back on my family and bringing those beautiful values and memories and like passing it on to my own family. Yeah, yeah. Would you think that you would have gone anywhere in the world as long as? your family stays together yeah yeah definitely yeah i guess you know it's it's such a nice feeling even for me to just think about how it is for you to have such strong family bonds and i'm not saying i'm not having that i'm also really close with my family mm. but having this strong bond to know everything will be all right as long as we are together no matter where we go no matter what happens we will be all right And it's really nice to see that with you, you know, and also knowing your sister and your brother and your mom. And it's just really nice to see how everyone is really, you know, being there for each other mm. and support along the way. Yeah. So it was a good decision. Then I would sum it up for you um, to come over here, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think one of the best decisions in life, like, my parents' decision to actually move here. It wasn't easy. It, it wasn't all sunny days and happy smiles. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was worth it, yeah. I would say. Yeah. The challenges that, ca that came with it, yeah. it's part of who we are now. It's part of who I, I am now and my siblings and my mom. Yeah. Yeah. 
Is there anything you feel like you want to, you know, bring up or you want to mention as well from this whole experience of moving countries where you feel like you want to, you know, get that off your chest or, you know, is there anything you want to mention for everyone who's listening? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think just enjoy life. To be honest, because life is so short. I mean, as cliche as it sounds, <laughs> it is so short. Like you don't know, you don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. You don't know what's gonna happen the next minute. You know. Exactly. So I think enjoy every moment, and I think one of the most important things is be present. Yeah. Because in this kind of world now, where you get phones, you get cameras, you get you know, you get a any new technology yeah. it's so easy to just you know don't talk to each other yeah. but it's so so easy to just drop everything and be present yeah i think being present is one of the things that people get mm, forget yeah people forget about being present but it's it's so important because you don't know you're yeah. not gonna get the same moment as now Yeah. You're not gonna get the same experience. Yeah, you know yeah. it's not gonna. You you might be go bungee jumping tomorrow, but it's not gonna be the same bungee jumping experience if you do it. You know, five years later. Later, so being present and enjoy your time with your family, with the people you love the most. Yeah, because life is short. That's yeah. that's very true. <laughs> yeah, that is so true. Well said. <laughs> And also, isn't that ironic how technology can connect and bring us together, but it also can disconnect us and, you know, make us feel even more lonely, yeah. as sad as it sounds. So yeah, I really yeah. like that advice of just being present and enjoy. And just, yeah, I think for me, a good reminder also to just make more time for my family and friends again, mm -hmm. even though I'm so far away, just to make sure that, you know, I'm checking in frequently. I'm making sure everyone is all right as well because, you know, life is so short. You never mm. know what happens and you don't want to regret anything. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I always finish um, my episodes with the fast three or quick three questions. Ooh. It's just, you know, three quick ones. I always ask the same questions mm -hmm. in a way. And it's just to have a short answer with one word or one sentence. Okay. So are you ready for <laughs> yours? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> okay. If you wouldn't want to live in New Zealand anymore, or if you would decide, okay, I want to settle down somewhere else, which country could you imagine living in? Japan. Japan. Oh, wow. I did not <laughs> expect that. Your reaction. Yeah. I was like thinking Australia or something, you know. <laughs> no, go for an Asian country. <laughs> <laughs> And would you not be any like afraid of, you know, language barrier or anything like that? Maybe not because I have friends. Right. Yeah. In Japan. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. And they're living there. Like one of my best friends, she lives there with right. her family. So nice. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. <laughs> okay, question number two. What do you miss the most about the Philippines? The food. <laughs> I'm gonna say the food. <laughs> Everyone does. It's just everywhere. Like everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Like when you go back, it's everywhere. Yeah, and it looks delicious, like the photos I see. Mm -hmm. Or even if you guys cook here, oh, so good <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's the food <laughs> yeah and honestly most of the people here say the food really i think it's just you know you oh, grew up with i think it. it's a cultural thing exactly mm -hmm. yeah i totally get that <laughs> all right last question for you cool what do you love the most about new zealand hmm wow that's a bit hard <laughs> <laughs> it's not that i don't love new zealand but like Yeah, finding a specific thing. Yeah. Oh, I think the places mm. where you can go. Like, there's so many places here Yeah. that I haven't been to that I want to go 
Do you mean like outdoor places? Yeah, outdoor places. Or like cities, towns? It doesn't matter, like just outside. Yeah. Like everywhere, there's something you can explore. Yeah, like a little adventure. Yeah, that's what I love about New Zealand. Like you can go out, you can go to the beach, you can go to the mountains, you go trekking, hiking, whatever. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, yeah. I like that too. Mm -hmm. It's And sometimes you you drive along. I just thought about it yesterday because we did the uh, white water rafting Ooh, cool. in Rotorua. And so we just drove that road and nothing would indicate that there is a massive, you know, waterfall going down the stream. It just doesn't look like there's anything. And it's just, you know, you go left and then there is this whole rafting river with waterfalls and it's so cool like you can drive around the corner and it's a little hill and next to it is a little hidden waterfall that's i love that too yeah right it's beautiful <laughs> like you can go anywhere and you'll find something new exactly that's true <laughs> thank you so much we have reached the end i'm really grateful for your time and that you know you made it over here and thank you so much for sharing your story and i could see sometimes your emotions as well i know it's hard for people because um we are not video recording so you can't always hear it but i could see like some parts were really emotional as well so i'm always very grateful you know for you sharing your authentic story and not holding back to really feel into it as well so thank you for that thank and you yeah i hope everyone who is listening to it can take something new from it if it's about motherhood if it's about community or if it's about you know just moving over as a family if you are thinking about it what maybe your teenage girls or boys could possibly think so um, thank you for listening and I hope I hear you next time. Bye bye.